this is the street below. Uh, we're in the middle of the typhoon right now, and I haven't really left much today uh, because of the winds and everything. Uh, the winds are really what you need to be concerned about because they can make any kind of debris, a flying projectile that could impale you and kill you. So uh, you, you can see that sign flapping down there. You'll see a sole person walking by now and then, but really, for the most part, everybody is uh, in their place. Uh, you know, it's best to be on the third floor or higher in case of flooding. It's been raining uh, consistently all day. Uh, this isn't even the worst the rain has been. It gets pretty deafeningly loud. So, um, yeah, if it gets any worse, I'll, uh, I'll show you that. Um, in Taiwan, uh, I just wanted to show you this. I mean, normal burners, right? But there's no stove. Uh, this is just storage under here. And there are no stoves that I know of. Maybe they sell them at Ikea, and maybe they cost a little bit. Probably cost a, more than a little bit um, if you can find them. But uh, in all the apartments I looked at, uh, it wasn't included. And I don't think I know really anybody who has one. I do have like a little toaster oven, which is good for little small things. As you can see, it's not very big. That's my hand next to it. Uh, but it sucks for me because the only thing I know how to make is like you know, instant ramen, which I'm going to have tonight, and, uh, and like casseroles in like a, in like an oven, you know, uh, but, so I gotta make something work here, I'm gonna have to actually learn how to cook this year, which sucks for me. A lot of people, though, don't even need to know how to cook here, and I'm probably gonna fall in that category, because it's cheaper and easier to just go out to eat for every meal. So people just don't feel any need to cook ever, and I'm just doing it because the typhoon is here. Uh, this is just based on what I've seen, but uh, it doesn't seem that uh, there are a lot of precautions that they take about spaying and neutering in Taiwan, because for these pet shops it doesn't make a great uh, deal of good to have cute little puppies like this in the windows, because people will feel, you know, attached to them and buy them. So I see a lot of these shops around, and uh, and it's really, really easy to get a pet. Um, and I see plenty of dogs on the street, so I don't think there's really many initiatives to spay and neuter the pets. Uh, at least it doesn't seem to be. Uh, it, again, this is just based on uh, what I what I've ex what I've seen and what I've experienced, uh, and not based on any kind of research I've done. I don't know if this is just a problem for Westerners, but it seems like even though that the standard of living here in Taiwan is very much lower than it is in Canada or the United States, it seems like all the foreigners I meet are spending just about the exact same amount that they would in the United States. I know that statistically, generally people spend 95% of what they make um, in, in the Western world. And uh, I think when people come over here and find out that the standard of living is lower, they plan on saving more. Uh, I know I do. I plan to have 8,000 US uh, saved by the end of this year. We'll see how I do with that. But it seems like everybody I've met who's been here like four or five years talked about originally coming over, you know, to have a cultural experience and save some money. And it seems like they're just living a higher standard of living uh, in a different country. Um, and it's just, I don't, I don't know if this is just like a Western problem or if it's just like a universal problem, but it's just like a lack of financial discipline, it seems like. I very much could end up eating these words at the end of the year if I only have like 2,000 saved up, but I really hope that's not the case. Uh, you know, with, with the money that we get, uh, you could do so much with that money. And so, like, I don't know, it's just kind of a strange observation that I've had. Uh, people who, by my standards, are making a really good amount of money, especially in this culture, still haven't saved as much as they had planned to or could have. It's just kind of a, a weird situation. I'm visiting a town called Tansia uh, on the very southern tip of Taipei County, and this is the Tsutse 
Temple, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, it is over 200 years old and it holds uh, some of the, uh, some very traditional, conventional um, uh, uh, Chinese uh, art. It's been rebuilt three times. Uh, it's, it's very old and incredibly beautiful. I get some shots from the inside. Here is the inside of the temple. Um, as you can see, they have an open kind of foyer area right here. And just got amazingly intricate art all around in every single one of these pillars, every single one of these walls, on the ceiling. Everything's just very traditional um, Chinese art. Uh, and it's just incredibly complex and intricate. As you, as you can see, they're still doing construction and renovating it. Apparently, they're supposed to be renovating it for the next two decades, I've heard. So, uh, it, it's supposed to be like the premier uh, temple to uh, see in, in just about all of Taiwan. Um, this is a ceramic store uh, on the old street in the city of uh, Yinga. And uh, we just came over from Senxia, I think the name of the last city was. And uh, we spent uh, part of the afternoon uh, making stuff at the uh, Ceramics Museum. So by us, I mean myself, James, Rebecca, and James's friend, David. So now we're just checking out some of the shops. Um, it's easy to find some good deals on Old Street. Um, yeah, and some of the stuff is overpriced, but you just got to kind of pick through and find stuff that's good. I'm with Seljic. What's up, Seljic? How you doing, man? Good, man. <laughs> <laughs> and James, and we are going to walk up that. We're in Yangmingshan National Park. Um, it's in uh, the northern area of uh, Taipei. And we've been taking bus and metro, and we just got here. Now we're going to walk about uh, a little over a kilometer to the top. And then we're going to go to some hot springs and chill out. Yeah. 